I think that sitcom Friends changed forever the topics of conversation that were uh, friends. F friends can talk about. That's right. And so we find younger adults talking about things I would never have dreamed of talking about. And they're not just talking about mm -hmm. it. Uh, sex has actually become oh, yeah. a recreation. Oh, it has. It really has. That's what hooking up's all about. Not so. no meaning, no commitment. Mm -mm. Just recreation, oh. fun. And then you throw in there developmentally the, the developmental process where there's. Um, a whole concept that it's the now generation. I need it now. I can't put it off. There's no ability to delay gratification. We see it on getting your email. Ten years ago when I got email, I was thrilled if I got it within the day. Now <laughs> they got to have it within the seconds on their BlackBerry. Now, it, it, it's nothing wrong with that. It's just reflective of how our culture is speeding up. And people, as a result, are having to do other things to calm themselves down. They're having to, we see a rise in drugs and prescription medications and in the use of alcohol and all of that to kind of slow down and retard this anxiety that comes from all this fast paced living. There's not much reflection in mm -hmm. life no. today, is no. there? No. Uh, really taking stock, mm -hmm. standing back and thinking about anything no, before you not do much it. Of that, huh? And in this high stress environment, we often want to be distracted. You know, it, you can only take so much of that. You get adrenalized and you, you've got to calm yourself down or you can't sleep. And so we see this huge market opening up with sleep medications all of a sudden. We see people become sexually impotent, struggle with those kinds of activities. So now we see this whole medical world open up with all kinds of medications there. And then we throw in the fact that the high blood pressure medications, the diabetes, the heart medications, all of which impact sexuality. Now we have to counter that with new medications. So to help your sexuality. To help your sexuality. And so we're just becoming a pharmaceutical company. Uh, culture. Culture. <laughs> we are. Yeah. And it's, it's going to get worse. And actually, there's no better distraction, uh, for men anyway, than sex. When women become anxious and depressed, they have a tendency to eat. When uh, men become anxious and depressed, they act out sexually. Or they develop an alter ego online in their gaming processes or with their avatar or they create an alternate Facebook image that they kind of live behind. Now is this your, and some of our viewers will remember, is this your dark side of the moon <laughs> coming around? It, it, well it is, it can be, and it can be helpful if you'll share this with your spouse, but just to put it out there for everybody else to read and figure out and learn about you, that's really risky mm. stuff. Just to amplify that a little bit, uh, I've shared this with a lot of people. Yeah. It really resonates, mm -hmm. uh, rings true. We're not talking about an evil side. No, no, we're not. Of our huh? personality. No. There's another side that we just don't explore when we're in real close proximity to each other. And just to make it through the life and make it through schedules and, and to get the kids out the door and back to bed and homework done, you kind of become like the moon and the earth in this little uh, face each other the same way all the time. And it gets very boring and dull, and there's always more to you than your spouse knows. And if you can begin to get in touch with some of that, it will enrich your marriage. But if you begin to put that out there for other people to read and try to hold yourself up to be something that you're not, you're going to get in trouble pretty quick. If you don't take, I know we're going to talk more about this this week, but if you don't take time to allow that part of you some expression, mm -hmm. Uh, than just meeting the right person who taps into that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Danger, it, danger, danger. It is. And the other side of that is many times a spouse doesn't want to hear the other side because it's too frightening or maybe it's unsettling to the marriage. But remember, you only know a part of your spouse. You just do. That's just the way human nature develops and unfolds across the lifespan. So keeping up with that all the way through your adult life is an interesting journey, to say the least. <laughs> mm. And a good reminder. Yeah. Uh, we hear it often when yeah. we talk on the subject of marriage that uh, you, you need to get to know your spouse. You need to make that a lifelong journey. If you haven't made a point to do that in a very specific fashion in the last five years, you don't know where your marriage is because marriage moves on and it is not a static union and it continues to grow and develop. And there's all kinds of new experiences that happen in it. So if you're treating your spouse and living with your spouse and talking with your spouse about topics that you were talking about five years ago, your marriage has moved beyond you.
So that's one of the factors of risk. You need to stay abreast of what's going on between the two of you. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> now, emotionally, we've touched on this a little bit. Um, I remember last visit, one of the aspects of this perfect storm, the internet mm -hmm. and, and the secrecy of it, yeah. has become a huge factor in what's happening to marriages today. Oh, it is. I mean, on the plus side, uh -huh. we've got people, I I'm surprised at the successful unions that are coming out of the internet services. Oh, there are some great statistics behind that stuff. I mean, initially really? I thought, mm, do you really want to go there? But oh, It's the best place to meet a, sp uh, a potential spouse. Really much mm. better than a bar or some place like that. And actually the numbers, if we had time, I'd go into those. Uh, Give us a taste. Give us a taste. Well, they actually say that when one of those agencies, I don't want to say which one, but one of them will actually tell you that if you meet their criteria and they put you online, they will give you five names, any one of which you'll have better than an 80% chance of reporting high-level marital satisfac satisfaction five years after the marriage. Now that's mm. as good or better than we can do on paper and pencil tests. Why does that work better than uh, meeting someone socially? Well, because the tendency is to hide. We don't, we're not real forthright and open when we first meet. It's a disclosure process. You're and telling so, everything about yourself. Then. Exactly. Okay. It, there's the match right up there in the numbers. So they put it together. You, you're not choosing. They're giving you some names of people that meet certain criteria and algorithms in their uh, statistical process. And yet opposites attract. How does that match? Well, mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff is proprietary, and I don't really know how they do it, but it's pretty good stuff. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Okay, it's, dark side of this situation, okay. secrecy of the internet. Um, what's your concern there? You've touched on it all. Well, the dark side for many people is not just the bad side, like pornography and stuff like that. But whenever we go through difficult times, sustained stress, we're going to talk about that a bit more, the, the tendency is to go back to happier times in your life. And so what you, have a, what you want to do is go back and find old classmates. And I wonder how Susie's doing, or I wonder how... Bill's doing, you know? Guys, those are great times. So now, in the last six, seven years, you just type their name into classmates.com and you find them. Now, the interesting thing about this, though, is that infatuation that you had with that individual has not gone away. You don't have to grow that relationship. It's stored. It's planted in your brain. It has a foundation already. It has already. a foundation there. And here's the saying we use. 30 minutes of regular contact with an old girlfriend or boyfriend you will have a second infatuation explosion. Oh, It'll boy. just sweep you off your feet, okay? It'll bring all that old stuff back. And here's the clincher. 30 more days, you're in the sack together. 60 days from the start of regular contact with an old boyfriend or girlfriend, not just a classmate, old boyfriend or girlfriend, you're gonna be fighting sexual temptation that you did not know existed. 